present briefly. Um, I suppose this will, uh, uh, business regulation obviously um, uh, matters uh, a lot. It matters for competitiveness. And um, according to um, the IMF's uh, last um, Article 4 report, um, if uh, um, every uh, single state in India um, uh, performed as uh, uh, the best performer amongst them on uh, um, business regulation, then uh, growth would uh, uh, increase, um, corporate investment would increase, and growth, uh, economic growth would uh, uh, increase um, uh, by 0.3% uh, uh, per year, which is not insignificant, particularly in this time of uh, uh, slowing down of uh, economic activity. It's, it's extremely important for uh, job creation as well, and one of, one of the challenges in in um, India in particular is that um, uh, most uh, jobs are in the informal sector, particularly in the manufacturing and trading uh, um, industry. Um, and um, it's uh, extremely important uh, for uh, access to markets uh, by um, uh, industries to domestic markets as well as to international uh, markets and it's uh, particularly uh, in India uh, essential to help formalize the informal sector which remain uh, prevalent uh, and pervasive. These are um, um, data on uh, how big is the informal sector uh, in the manufacturing industry in India. As you see it makes uh, 99% uh, of firms, uh, it makes um, two-thirds of uh, employments and it's on a much faster increase than uh, formal um, employment. Uh, how to measure uh, the quality of uh, business regulated, uh, regulation? There are uh, different tools for that and they are all uh, problematic. One is uh, perception. <coughs> And we have, these are the, latest, uh, the latest data from uh, the World Bank. The World Bank issues uh, uh, each year what is called the uh, World Governance uh, Indicators, which are um, uh, aggregate indicators uh, of uh, um, uh, governance, which are uh, disaggregated under uh, different sub-indicators. And one is about the uh, regulatory uh, quality. And as you, you uh, may see, it's on decrease uh, in India. Uh, relatively significantly for the uh, the past uh, uh, the past few years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's so problematic. Uh, perception is so problematic that we've discarded these indicators. Although we are still publishing, releasing them, we have discarded these indicators for any operational use uh, within the uh, institution. Um, ranking and scoring matters, obviously, because that's. Uh, um, a benchmark for investors, and again on this uh, particular, um, thank you, on uh, the burden of, of uh, government regulation based on the last uh, global competitiveness uh, report, you uh, may see that India's ranking is on significant decrease, has been on significant decrease for the past um, uh, few years. Um, it's not only that uh, others are performing better, it's also that uh, India is uh, scoring uh, lower. Uh, the, the problem, I'll, I'll mention a few issues with uh, uh, ranking. International ranking have uh, raised a lot of uh, um, um, uh, methodological issues. Uh, one is, uh, when it comes to regulation uh, in particular, is that you're... Uh, in, in many instances, comparing apples and, and, and pears in, in the same uh, regulation uh, may have a very uh, different impact in, in many, um, in different countries, in different contexts. In some uh, countries, um, the uh, regulation may incur uh, benefits, in others only uh, uh, penalties for uh, uh, companies. So, um, when uh, using uh, indicators, one uh, should be extremely uh, cautious, and that's the sense of this uh, 
uh, this slide. Um, uh, uh, this, uh, a proper assessment of business regulation calls for um, a cost-benefit analysis. Um, for example, legal security is uh, a major um, uh, parameter uh, that matters a lot for um, uh, entrepreneurs and, and, and investors. How do you measure that under um, uh, uh, business indicators, uh, business um, environment indicators? That, that's uh, that's a, a, a big issue. And uh, that relates to uh, the question uh, raised this morning by Ayrul Mayra on uh, enforcement. Enforcement and complexity of the regulatory uh, framework. Uh, we, tend, we may use uh, proxy indicators, and uh, these are the ones that um, uh, you mentioned, um, uh, doing business. Doing business is made of 10 indicators, which are supposed to reflect the business environment um, as a whole, but which are extremely focused and extremely uh, narrow uh, down on uh, specific uh, administrative uh, procedures, which you may think are not representative of the whole um, and that's, um, uh, I must say that uh, the doing business uh, uh, exercise which has been conducted by the World Bank for the past uh, now seven years has been extremely contentious uh, within the institution as, as, as well as with its, uh, 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 some of its members including the government of, of, of India and it's, uh, uh, it has re uh, recently been decided by the president to send it back to the, to, uh, the research department to uh, align it better with uh, uh, the uh, knowledge uh, and, and, and other uh, research exercises uh, conducted by, by the bank. Uh, then rating has its limitations as well, uh, because you may create uh, perverse incentives for government to uh, uh, perform better on the face of it. They may focus on indicators which are not the, uh, necessarily uh, the right ones, and, and um, um, we've observed that uh, 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 when using the, the doing business indicator to, in, to engage on, on policy reforms. Um, then there is um, uh, uh, the same regulatory framework does not apply in um, uh, the same way to uh, uh, different um, uh, operators or uh, and uh, this is a bias that Len, Len Pritchett, uh, who is uh, well known, he's a former uh, uh, bank, uh, World Bank economist, has called the incumbency uh, bias. Um, to some entrepreneurs and investors, uh, the law would apply. To others, the law would be opposed to, uh, or the regulation would be opposed to. So, uh, the benefits are different, and uh, incumbents would go away with uh, 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 a relatively favorable uh, uh, business uh, environment, and others would be penalized by the same, the, exactly the, the same rule. So what really matters is to capture the statistical dispersion of respondents' answer uh, to uh, the perception of uh, the regulatory uh, uh, and um, environment. And that's what, uh, in fact, uh, Nen Pritchett expresses in, in the sentence below. That this dispersion in the same country is wider than uh, the dispersion across countries in the perception of, of uh, regulatory frameworks. Um, that says about the limitation, by the way, of the doing business um, um, report in capturing the quality of uh, business regulation. And then, of course, there, is, uh, uh, there may be uh, all the difference in the world between de facto and the URA uh, regulation, what's in the books, in the um, uh, legal framework, and what really applies. And, 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 and it's true, obviously, uh, Mr. Myra mentioned that as a major issue in, in India, but it's true everywhere in the world. In, in my own country, um, uh, the uh, uh, theoretical tax liabilities are much higher than the effective uh, tax rate when you account for all the tax expenditures, that is, exemptions, uh, uh, rebates, and, and all that that are granted to, to different categories of, of uh, companies. So that 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 is um, uh, an important. Uh, so this this uh, discrepancy between de facto and de jure is captured here in this uh, on this uh, 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 graph. 
and India is here, so it's one of those who is the most affected by this discrepancy, but not, not the uh, worst case. You see, here is South Africa and, and other countries. So it's a, it's a, a common uh, phenomenon. Here is, uh, and it, it, still, uh, it, it still comes from uh, uh, Len Pritchett's um, uh, work. Here, uh, this graph, which seems uh, uh, complicated, says one thing. It, uh, it, it says that some uh, reforms which are uh, positive on, in, in principle, for example, reducing procedural delays, in that case, for uh, clearing imports, may have, in fact, exactly the opposite impact. And that's captured here. So uh, let's take uh, Turkey. In Turkey, uh, the delays are reduced here based on uh, uh, the computation and the doing, business, uh, the doing business indicator. In reality, the cost, the, the, the delays, are, as perceived by importers, is on slight increase. And for others, it's even in Armenia, it's, why that? Because if you don't pay attention, uh, uh, a reform, a policy reform may give uh, opportunity for more discretion, for more abuse of power, for whatever, uh, and uh, have a, a, a perverse uh, impact. So that, that's a, a major uh, phenomenon, and, and as you see, it's not uh, uh, unique to India, it's common to uh, all countries in the world. Uh, th these are the four, uh, um, what we uh, consider uh, as the four uh, critical dimensions of, of regulation in, in, uh, in India as, as well as in um, other countries. Um, I, I won't expand on, 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 uh, on this one. I'll go to the uh, conclusion and, and, and here um, uh, uh, that relates to, uh, to India in particular. Um, there is a need, uh, and uh, I think uh, Irwin Myra uh, alluded to that, there is really a need to map the regulatory fra framework. Uh, what uh, effectively, what's the regulation, what's the, uh, from um, a company's perspective, what is the regulations that effectively apply? Um, and that hasn't been done yet. So uh, we don't know uh, to what extent regulations are conflicting uh, or, or, or not. And that takes uh, m mapping uh, the regulatory framework across the three tiers of government. Uh, it takes uh, identifying overlaps, obsolescence. Uh, there's a tendency, in particular in India, uh, not um, to terminate the uh, uh, laws or, or regulations which have become obsolete. So you, you're piling up um, uh, uh, regulations we, and, and creating um, legal uncertainty for those who are supposed to apply the, the regulatory framework and those who are submitted to, to, to it. Um, and, and of course, mapping enforcement. Enforcement is, is, uh, is uh, critical, effectiveness and consistency. Um, another uh, um, uh, important dimension is, that I mentioned that uh, already, is assessing the distributional and actual impact uh, of reforms. So, uh, capturing the de facto experience at uh, the receiving end of, uh, the regula uh, of regulations, uh, and as well, and, and also measuring uh, uh, threshold effects. So, that, that's, uh, I think, uh, Arul Myra uh, uh, alluded to that uh, uh, this morning. Um, uh, the country is evolving fast, and its uh, industries are evolving fast. So, if you have a, 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 a particular regulation meant to um, easy up um, uh, or, or to uh, uh, support um, small, small size uh, company, you must be careful that these companies are not bound to remain small. They may um, uh, need to evolve, uh, to scale up. And in fact, um, uh, one of our observations is that um, uh, middle sized uh, companies over uh, 50, 50, uh, 50 employees are underrepresented in, in, in India, and, and that's one, one of the bottlenecks. So, um, you, you may want to avoid stunting effect on companies um, resulting from eligibility criteria. And that's also, so uh, that, that notion of uh, um, uh, factoring, it, 
factoring in uh, your uh, uh, regulatory policy evolution uh, is, is an important dimension. Uh, business regulation are uh, and should be used as a policy tool. They serve a purpose. If they don't, well, um, they should be uh, uh, phased out. Uh, one, uh, big, uh, di uh, one important dimension is the national market integration in, in India. Uh, all the dimensions are uh, uh, policy dimensions of different orders. One uh, could be uh, gender equality. Uh, industrial development is, is uh, 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 an obvious objective, and job creation uh, as well. I'll, I'll come back to gender equality in a second, or, or rather right away. We just published um, a report on uh, women in business. Um, it's striking because, uh, well, first, uh, you may, uh, what, what you see here is that they, there is some correlation between the, uh, the uh, competitiveness of the economy and the women, the participation in business. Uh, what's uh, important? What's important is, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, by the way, India uh, 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 fares uh, rather badly on the on the global gender uh, gap report <laughs> on all dimensions except um, uh, women political uh, empowerment. Um, and in this, in, in this, um, in, in this uh, particular respect, there's a reason for that. Uh, the government has legislated uh, to reserve seats in local assemblies and, and all that. So the question here is, do you need more regulation to uh, uh, improve the, uh, the economic and, and uh, uh, the economic participation of women uh, um, uh, to improve competitiveness? Uh, some countries are legislating, mine is doing that. Uh, European, uh, the European Commission is uh, uh, issuing uh, directives on the, on the matter. So that, that's one um, important uh, uh, dimension, obviously. Um, also, business sh regulation should be um, uh, construed as uh, a service. Uh, I think the, the, the minister alluded to a, a series of reforms and the, 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 the common service centers and, and, and so on. A lot of states uh, in India are, um, uh, have enacted the right, the right to service, for example, that applies to citizens as well as to companies. And one of them, Kamataka, is reporting on uh, the, uh, the, uh, to what extent procedural delays in uh, collecting uh, commercial taxes um, have been reduced under the under the act, um, so that that's uh, uh, obviously an important dimension on which uh, the states are starting to uh, emulate uh, each other, and on which uh, we see uh, a lot of uh, actual progress and potential uh, uh, progress. Um, so that's the last uh, uh, part of it. Um, there's a lot. Of initiatives, and uh, the, the minister, this uh, state minister, this morning uh, um, uh, reported on what uh, uh, the government of West Bengal is doing. Other states are, are doing that. They, there's a wide um, uh, uh, variation of uh, across uh, the states, across the, the, the cities um, in India. So, by uh, if only uh, by emulating the best performance. Uh, one may expect that a lot of progress in the quality, in the as a whole of uh, business, uh, the business climate could uh, could uh, um, could be achieved. Um, and as I said, uh, business regulation is not um, uh, could be considered as as a, as a service. A lot rests on the interaction between um, public administration and, 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 and companies. And that's also an entry point for further reforms. I'll stop at that. Um, I hope I haven't been too long. And I'll uh, give the floor now to, I understand, uh, Nabuzi, if I'm right. Is that right? Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Lom, and thank you to uh, Dr. Rajit Kathuria, to the organizers, uh, Ikria Gas and uh, Vicky for inviting me here. Um, I'm going to try and be very brief because I think we've got a lot of interesting presentations to come. Um, 
and I'm going to try and focus on one aspect of the larger regulatory story, which is looking at independent regulatory agencies, uh, which is a particular form of regulation in India that we've struggled with, and that is actually, as I'll show in a second, has been growing very dramatically. And I've sort of titled this somewhat, somewhat sort of uh, uh, open-endedly promise and, and reality. So I want to sort of get into a little bit of how, how this has actually worked. Uh, let's see if I can find the page down here. There we go. So first of all, you know, why should we, we be concerned with these agencies, uh, these independent regulatory agencies? Uh, to begin with, what are they? Well, they are law-backed, specialized agencies. And one reason we should be concerned with them is that they're proliferating. So when I say law-backed, specialized agencies, they are dedicated agencies meant to do things that elements of, the, of, of, a, of a ministry or a department have done in the past, uh, like set electricity tariffs or telecom rates and so on and so forth. So we have a whole bunch of these now. We have uh, uh, IRAs, as they're called, in telecom, in electricity, in petroleum and gas. We have SEBI in the financial sector. And we have many more that are on the anvil, that are discussed in the media a lot. So you have uh, potential regulators in coal, environment, health, education, real estate. So any sector that there's sort of seems to be some kind of problem, some sort of misgovernance, we're now talking about a regulator as a way of fixing this. But there's a bit of a puzzle here. They don't actually work so well in many sectors. So why on earth do we keep creating them? What's the reason? 